Hello friends, this is uh, Wednesday, uh, uh, May the 6th, and uh, I'm glad that you're here to thank you for joining me. Yes, I do need a haircut. Uh, I've got an appointment Saturday, so hopefully I will look a little cleaner and uh, a little less bushy on the head this Saturday, this Sunday. Uh, I want to share a devotion with you today from, from Proverbs chapter 4. And I want to talk about guarding your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning in verse 20, listen to what the Word of God says. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, spring the issues of life. T.S. Eliot, the poet, wrote, Where is the life we have lost in the living? You know, a lot of people today, it seems, are just going through the motions of living. They are drawing a breath and drawing a paycheck, but there's no joy. There's no purpose. There's no zest in their life. Where is the life? that we have lost in the living. Uh, these words of Solomon, I think, are particularly um, appropriate for us today. We've got so much time in our, on our hands that people are getting into things that they shouldn't. Uh, pornography use is way up, way up. Alcohol sales are, are exponentially up. Uh, suicide rates are rising, and I think it's because we have all of this time on our hands and we're not guarding our hearts. Clint Eastwood, in one of his movies, um, there was a, a line where he said, somebody left the barn door open and the wrong dogs came home. Uh, we have left the barn door open and the wrong dogs are coming home. We have to close the barn door. We have to guard our hearts. So there are three questions I want us to, as we look at this passage, three questions that I want us to ask. Number one, what are the issues that come from our hearts? What are the issues that come from our hearts? He's talking about the heart being the source, being the wellspring. And there are certain things that flow from, that emanate from, that issue from our hearts. What are those things? Uh, I think some of those things are, well, love is one of those things. We all have a desire to love and to be loved, to care for someone and to have someone genuinely care for us. Friendship is one of those things that issues from our heart. We have, we have this desire to connect with people, to be friends with people, to have people that we can relate to. Purpose is one of those things that emanates from our heart. That thing that gets us up in the morning and keeps us going. Dreams emanate from our hearts. That, that vision, that picture of where we want to be one day. Integrity comes from the heart. That desire for honesty and to be right. Humility is one of the issues of the heart. Without humility, um, we, we can think that we are the center and maybe the apex of the universe and, and everything revolves around us. And without humility, we become hard to live with. So we, humility is one of those issues of the heart. Faith is one of the issues of the heart. And so is hope. What is the difference between faith and hope? Faith is something you believe in. Hope is something you expect for. Faith is one of the things you believe in. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have put my trust in him as my Savior, and I know that my sins are forgiven and heaven is my home. But now because of that, I have certain things that I hope for. I'm expecting. I'm expecting Christ to return one day. I'm expecting to be in, home, in heaven one day. Also, resolve is one of those things that, that emanates from our heart, that that uh, desire to just stick to something, to, to hang in there. Also, holiness is one of those issues of the heart, the desire for purity and to be right with God. Recently, there have been some stories about some, 
some well-known preachers and ministers who have turned their back on the faith. We say about such people, they lost heart. Uh, they gave up because they lost heart. They turned away because they lost heart. It is vitally important, isn't it? It is critical that we guard our hearts and the issues of the heart. But then the second question is, why should we guard our hearts? Why should we guard our hearts? It's because these qualities that I just men mentioned, love, friendship, resolve, integrity, faith, hope, holiness, these are qualities that need to be protected, protected and all the more in this day in which we live. Why? Because we have an enemy who uh, is working. The Bible says he's crouching at the door. He's like a lion who's going about seeking whom he may devour. He's watching for an opportunity to snatch these qualities away from our hearts. T.S. Eliot, in that same poem in which he said, where is the life we have lost in the living, also said, referred to the desert that is in the heart of your brother. The desert that is in the heart of your brother. That is, I believe that if we allow these qualities to be snatched away from our hearts, that our hearts become like a desert. They become, they become like a wasteland. If, if, think about it. If we do not have these qualities in our hearts, then we're not going to have them in our homes. And if we're not going to have these qualities in our homes, they're not going to be in our town, in our city, in our community. And think about it. Do you want to live in a town where there's no honesty, there's no integrity, there's no love, there's no resolve, there's no holiness? If you say, no, that's not the kind of place I want to live in, then we better start by guarding these things in our own hearts. So ancient cities would have walls around them. And those walls were the first line of defense. They would station sentries on those walls and their job was to watch for the intruder. And at the first sight of anything suspicious, they were to sound the alarm. You remember the story of Nehemiah when he came back to Jerusalem and they began to rebuild the walls of the city. He commanded the people to work with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other. In other words, while they were working, they were ready for warfare. They were prepared for work and they were also prepared for the battle. And that must also be our attitude that we uh, cannot ever let our guard down. And so we have to guard our hearts and protect these things. But the final question is, and I think this is the one we probably are asking ourselves by now, how? How do we guard our hearts? Well, I want you to look back at what he said at the beginning of that passage. Back in verse 20, Solomon said, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So he's, what he's referring to? He's referring to the book of Proverbs. He's referring to the word of God. We have to incline our ears to the word of God. He says in verse 21, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all our flesh, to all of our bodies. So we have to be diligent to protect these things. We have to be constantly on our guard to, to, to see that these things remain in our hearts. Uh, but how do we do that? Well, let me just mention two things that we desperately need in our day. Number one, we need the Word of God. 
The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 9, How can a young man keep his way pure? And then he answers the question, By keeping your word. You see, the word of God in our hearts is like a filter. It filters out all of the unclean things that can, that can contaminate the spring of our heart and therefore pollute everything else in our lives. And so we have to be careful, don't we? We have to, we have to, uh, we have to be sure that the Word of God abides in our hearts so it can test our attitudes and, 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 and filter these, these contaminants out of our hearts. We need to develop a routine, a daily habit of studying the Word of God. If we're going to guard our heart, we have to dig in the Word of God every day of our lives. But number two, we also need the church. And, and, and let me be very specific about that, not just the church, but we need the church that preaches the Word of God. The Bible says that the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Without these two qualities, without these two things, without the Word of God and without the church, our hearts are like a city without walls. So we must do everything we can to get the Word of God in our hearts and to build a church that upholds and proclaims the Word of God, the truth. So if you want to keep your heart right, if you want to guard your heart, then stay in the Word and build the church that preaches the Word. Do not neglect the Word of God. And do not neglect the church. And having said that, I hope you develop a daily routine of getting into God's Word. Guard your heart. And also, build the right kind of church. Having said that, I'll see you Sunday at 1030 for Sofa Service. I love you. Stay encouraged. Stay safe. I'm praying for you. I love you. And uh, I'll see you next time.